Alan Van Capel, Executive Director of the Empire State Pride Agenda, New York's statewide LGBT civil rights and advocacy organization, recently sat down with labor leader Randy Weingarten, the newly elected president of the 1.4 million member American Federation of Teachers. Tonight, Weingarten and Van Capel discuss the intersection of the labor movement and the LGBT rights movement, creating safe school environments, and the joy of teaching. Last year, October 2007, you come to the Sheridan in New York, the Empire State Pride Agenda Dinner, and in the middle of accepting an award, you say that my sexual orientation was not as common a knowledge as it probably is tonight. Why did you decide to come out then? It was only when I realized, I think, that I could be viewed as a labor leader in my own right and that um, talking about my sexuality would actually be a way of expanding other civil rights. I realized that I needed to actually be a role model and a leader in this area by using myself. And a lot of what I feared and what others fear just didn't materialize. So I get to ask you a question. What's the next frontier for ESPA? What's the next frontier in civil rights? Uh, the two groups I think about most are young people, mm -hmm. right? Some of the right. folks that you're working with. Right, exactly right. You know, 40% of the homeless uh, kids on the street tonight identify as LGBT. Kids coming out at an earlier age, we have done virtually nothing as a community to protect those kids when they come out, when they are kicked out of their homes or harassed in schools, right. and turn on the street uh, to, for street work or for drugs, and then end up in a criminal system, which you know, we know isn't that uh, helpful to them. And the other thing I think about are senior citizens, who this generation of seniors out their whole life, now going into an assisted living or a nursing facility, only to go back into the closet because the folks who are caring for them uh, have no cultural competency whatsoever in gay and lesbian lives. And so they're abused and victimized in the nursing homes. And I don't think that ever gets public attention. Right. And I think those are some of the issues we have to be working on. When we actually work on these kind of issues together, like the Dignity of All Students Act that we worked on together between the union and ESPA, when we work on these things together, we bring the collective clout of several different communities um, to bear on an issue, and we're successful and effective in the political um, stream when we do it together. We always say that if it's only LGBT people talking about LGBT issues, we lose. Right, exactly. And so when we ask everybody, who are the most important actors in your state capital? And chances are they're people of faith, labor leaders and unions, uh, and corporations. And if you could either win those folks over to your side right. and activate them to be working for you and using their cloud for you, or neutralize them, then you have a better shot at winning. July uh, 2008, right. Newsweek cover about Lawrence King, 15 years old, killed in his classroom. A story about the kids coming out as gay, gender identity, and how schools can protect those kids. How safe are kids who are experimenting and, and, and thinking about uh, their gender identity and their sexual orientation in schools? You would hope that schools would be the safest places possible for kids and that schools would always be this incredible safety net for kids. Um, and by and large, that's, that's true. But then when we have situations like this, we realize we have so much more to do. Part of the reason why I push both on a local and national level for um, tolerance education. I know that um, the Ad Council and GLSEN is going to be doing a, a big ad campaign, I think, as we speak, about educating people about how words hurt. Mm -hmm. Like if when you, when you say to kids, it's oh, so you're gay. so gay, or it's so gay, that sends all the wrong messages. Do you like this top? It's so gay. Really? Yeah, it's totally gay. You know, you really shouldn't say that. <laughs> say what? Well, say that something's gay when you mean it's bad. It's insulting. So we got a lot more work to do in this country. What role do teachers play in all this? I always get to this issue thinking and talking about um, tolerance and respect. Because if there is an environment 
which is respectful and tolerant, regardless of whether people look the same as you or act the same as you or love the same people mm -hmm. as you love. If you get to basic tolerance and respect, then we don't have um, situations of kids tragically being killed um, because of who they are, whether it's Matthew Shepard or whether it's this young man. And ultimately, that is part of our obligation as school teachers. Did you like teaching? I love teaching. What did you really loved, like about it? I mean, it was both <laughs> frustrating and exhilarating at the same time. I often say that teachers are a combination of um, Martin Luther King Jr., Albert Einstein, um, Gandhi, and Tony <laughs> Soprano, all rolled in together, um, because that's all the skill set you need as a school teacher. But it's um, but what I loved about teaching is kids are so incredibly resilient, and they are willing to be pushed if you can figure out the, you know, the right strategies. You know your content well because you can't. You know, kids know if you if you kids know a phony. Kids know a phony, but when you're real with them and when you push them to be the best they can be and when they get it, it is the most satisfying professional moment in life. When you see that, when you see a sparkle in a kid's eye, when you see um, you know, one of your kids making that connection, there's nothing better. And that's what I loved about teaching. Do you miss it? Yes, I loved would it. Would you go back at some point? I would, I would love to go back at some point, but teaching five periods a day was the most exhausting job I ever had. It just drains all of your energy out of you when you're doing it at, at the level at that, that level. most teachers do it at. Um, but it is the best, most fulfilling um, life's work that anybody could do, make a difference in the life of a child. What um, do you envision Alan Van Capel is gonna be doing five years from now? I know, I'd like to be a father. Tell you the truth. Good you know, you. I used to think I want to be a teacher to, um, in some ways, although after the description of how exhausting it is, I'm not, exa <laughs> I'm not exactly sure that's the first thing I'd be jumping into. I don't know. It's my, it's my honest answer. I know I don't want to run for office. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing I'm positive of. I really learned that there is so much change that can be made when you're not an elected official. This, uh, it's so exciting to me to get people who think the politics is up here. My aha light bulb moment is when you go to a community of folks and say, you have so much more power than you think you have, right? right? That elected official is not up here, they're here. And then you actually get to drive their agenda. Right. So as we come to the end of this conversation, but uh, as I look forward to other conversations with you, some parting thoughts for us? One of the, one of the major lessons I've learned in life was that you, you can actually get things done for people through the political process. You can get things done in the American democracy, as frustrating as it is. If you have collective action, we can actually make this country a better place. We can make it a more tolerant place. We can make it a more respectful place. We can make it a place where people have the economic dignity and respect they so need and a place where they can be whoever they want to be. And that is the lesson that I've learned. And frankly, you have helped teach it to me. Thank you. Well, thank you. you. And thank you and your members of the AFT and uh, the UFT uh, for being such strong advocates for safe schools and for marriage equality. And so thank you, Randy Weingarten. Thank you, Alan Van Capel.